Hey, you guys. So now we're going to work on the crank set. This right here is your crank set. And there's a lot to know about crank sets. Um, I don't want to get into too much detail here, but I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview. This is a, a 10 speed steel lugged road bike crank set. This is the one you want to have. And the way that you know it's the one you want to have is you're looking for these, these uh, chain ring bolts right here. Huh? You see there's five chain ring bolts. It's aluminum. Aluminum's the material you want it to be out of. It shouldn't be steel. And I'll show you the ones you don't want to have in contrast so you get a better sense. So this, you can tell it's not aluminum, huh? Because it's shinier. It's chrome. It's chromed steel. But here's why you don't want to have it. Uh, almost all the, the stuff on bikes now is called square taper bottom bracket, which means that inside the center of this is like a, a square, a square uh, bolt that goes through the bottom of your, your bike frame. Not, not so with this. This is what's called a cottered crank set. The way you know a cottered crank set is it has a hole right here, right? This is not the one. Um, cotters are hard to deal with. They're actually these little bolts that expand and you can only use them once. And it's really hard to find them now. You find this stuff on like a lot of old English bikes from the 60s. If you can, when you, you can still use the frame, but you're probably gonna be changing out the bottom bracket and you're probably gonna be changing out the crank set if you have a cottered crank, because you're not gonna wanna put that back together. So be on the lookout for this. This is not the one. This, also not the one. I remember earlier we talked about um, 10 speed road bikes and how mountain bikes typically have a triple on the front instead of a double. This is the example. This is a, a triple right here. And the problem with this one um, is that it's welded together. It looks like you have these, these five chain ring bolts, but it's just a trick. It's actually just one piece. It's all welded together. So you can't separate these chain rings to get a single chain ring for your conversion. So that's not the one you want to have. And there's also some funky stuff about uh, chain line spacing and, and uh, back spacing with uh, mountain bike crank sets. You'd be better off to be using a road bike crank set too. So here we are. This is what you have on your bike. Now you could run a single speed bike by just choosing one or two, um, you know, one of these two and just running it to your single speed back here. So you could do that. It doesn't look that clean, and that's why people convert this to a single speed in the front, because they want the clean look. They want the aesthetic of a single chain ring in the front and a single chain ring in the back. So the way that you do that is you go to your local bike cooperative or store, and you pick up what's called single speed chain ring bolts. One moment. Let me grab them. So this is what you need right here. This is single speed chain ring bolts. The deal with these bolts is they're a little bit shorter than the bolts that come in here because uh, instead of having two chain rings, you only have one, so you need smaller bolts. You can try to modify these bolts and use chain ring uh, spacers and stuff. It ends up being a lot of pain. So, you know, go spend your, your 10 bucks or your 15 bucks and buy a set of single speed chain ring bolts. All right, so we're gonna take this, uh, this crank set apart and, and convert it to a single speed. You just take these five single speed chain ring bolts off. And I'm using a, a what? A five millimeter? I think they're all universal size. So I think it'll just be a five millimeter. Sometimes this doesn't go as well as it's going right now. But what you need to do is you need to get um, some kind of screwdriver, like large screwdriver or, or something else that will hold the back of the chain ring bolt that you're loosening because sometimes they'll just they'll spin if it's spinning and it's not breaking loose from the the nut in the back there's actually a slot in the nut that you can stick a screwdriver in so you see we're getting there we're just about there also you know if we were doing this with more tools and a little more professionally you might take this whole crank set off this whole crank set off and put it on the bench. And um, the way that you would do that is you take this little plastic cap off and you take that 15 millimeter nut off there and then you'd use a, a special uh, crank set puller which we don't got today. So look, now this thing's coming apart. Mm -hmm. 
Can you can you zero in on this? This is what I'm talking about. Fortunately, these ones are like rusted together, but if they weren't rusted together, you could stick something across that slot to both sides as you were loosening this side of the chain ring like that um, in case that whole thing is spinning. So now you have a choice. Are you going to use your big or your small chain ring? This is probably like a 52. Normally they have a stamp on them that will tell you. 52 tooth is what I'm looking to find here. And I don't see it. Anyway, so you get to choose, you know, which one are you going to have? Small or big? Since I'm in a place where people are biking and there's a lot of hills, I'm going small. Single speed chain ring bolts. And you just reassemble it. Let me show you the difference too. Here's why you need to go buy them instead of using the bolts you already have. You see the length difference? It's actually like that. You see the length difference? This is the original one, and it's longer because you have an extra um, chain ring in there. This one's shorter, so you'll be able to tighten this one up. If you put this one back, it wouldn't tighten down. Okay, so you also have another choice here. Whether you're going to put the, the chain ring on the inside of the crank set, like this, or the outside of the crank set, like this. Since some... Um, since the coaster brake hubs that I'm using are, are 110 millimeter, which is kind of narrow, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the inside, which will help me get my chain line straight. So as you tighten these things down, you tighten them the same way that you would tighten car lug nuts, which is across from each other. So I tighten this one down, and then I tighten this one down. Then I'll tighten this one down. You just kind of go in a star pattern. You don't need to, but it helps. And sometimes the, the back will spin, and you're going to want to have a screwdriver or something back there to hold it still. Um, I'm wondering if I want to go do that right now, because they're not quite as tight as I want, but that's what it should look like when you're done. So I'm going to go through these one more time and tighten them down pretty much as tight as I can, just using a flathead screwdriver and uh, the 5 millimeter hex. Make sure that the screwdriver you have is bigger than the one I'm using. <laughs> Save yourself a lot of trouble. Alright you guys, so we converted our crank set to single speed. Now we're going to start working on another project. Bye.